How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Dimitri and this is Value Cars Australia and today I'm offering you a promised translation of a Russian video from a lovely channel called Pro Drive with the host Sergey, who has a friend here and they both are owners of tank vehicles in Russia. So uh, Sergey owns a tank 300 that he already told us a lot about. There are a lot of videos already on my channel, well a few anyway, um, uh, that I've translated where his initial impressions were shared. Today his friend Andrew is joining him on his brand new at the moment of recording of their video tank 500, which costs a lot in Russia at the very least by the average kind of standards. It's quite a bit more expensive than Tank 300. It's a vehicle of what they refer to as a representative class, aka it is, it's a seven-seater, it's a luxurious seven-seater, and rich people who do not own a Toyota Land Cruiser, which because even there it's like double the price, they opt into buying Tank 500, at least at that point in time. And it's a lovely vehicle, one way or another, and it's coming to Australia, which is why this video was requested and I was, you know, pleased to translate it for you. What they are doing here today is they, as friends, went and with families, they went to some kind of wilderness there in Russia, and they are going to take both cars through an improvised obstacle course. It's not an, a, an obstacle course per se, but it's basically a four-wheel driving track that is not a deliberate track. They will just choose their own adventure through the forest, hills, descents, uh, dips, and other kind of difficult terrain you will see in a minute. And uh, they will take Tank 300 through there with commentary, and they will then subsequently follow the same track with Tank 500. That's the format to expect from this video. This video has been kindly sponsored by Car Linkage Systems and U2 Air Pro Wireless Adapter. It is providing wireless connectivity to your Android Auto or Apple CarPlay of your car. Instead of wires, you just pair this little box and connect it once and leave it there somewhere there on the shelf of your car, whatever your car is, and then magically you will have wireless connectivity to your built-in system. I have reviewed this box in detail, I have really liked it so far, we've been using it, my wife and I, intermittently, depending on which car we are driving uh, out of the two cars in the family, and we've been quite impressed so far. There has not been any issues with connectivity like we used to have with wired connection, where intermittently the maps were disconnecting and that kind of stuff. All of that has been solved with this little box right now, which we're big, big fans of, and on top of that it's rather affordable, which is very, very good. Now, Carlinkit Systems have always also provided a very generous discount code for anyone who wants to purchase this product using my link. It's provided in the description of this video. Open the description, click the link, get a massive discount on, well, relatively massive discount on purchase of the U2 Air Pro wireless adapter. And thank you very much for your support. So this, both of these vehicles, in case it's interesting for you, they have both differential locks in front and at the back. They have also tried to even out the field and put the same uh, wheels, the same tires on both of the vehicles, not wheels, but the tires. These are 20 inch wheels, um, the tires that they've put on to make the clearance somewhat comparable and the grip somewhat comparable. So good on them for doing that, yeah? So basically, the Tank 500 is heavier and is less designed for off-roading. It's an off-road capable vehicle, as we will see further in this video. But straight from the from the start, Sergei kind of keeps repeating it. He says, well, look at this lo lovely, luxurious kind of thing. It is um, not, no one would imagine that anyone would drag it through such wilderness and through such kind of punishment that they're about to inflict on this vehicle, which I agree with. Not many people would buy Tank 500 for this purpose, yeah? As we will see shortly, it's more than capable, but at the same time, I still think a lot of these things will, will tell us and confirm that if your primary purpose is four-wheel driving and off-roading, you probably need to be mad to buy a 500. But anyway, all right, so they are predominantly, they will be switching between the modes, manually adjustable modes of 4L, 4H, in terms of how the four-wheel driving um, uh, capability works. They will be using differential locks quite a lot and uh, Sergey says that differential locks are more often than not are what makes all the difference in terms of the capability of the vehicle to make it through 
Sergei says that it was raining not long ago and the ground is rather slippery and a bit muddy. It's not super wet until they reach the real depths, but um, at the same time there is a bit of clay in that kind of soil, so you have to also understand that there is quite a bit of a slippery surface there. So here is the steep, uh, steep hill decline where they're using the assisted descent mode. The, he's pressing that button and uses the assisted descent and basically is uh, it's very easy the tank 500 it's a massive vehicle so they are testing they need to do a turn and they are testing that that mode of an assisted turn in tank it's basically where the tank vehicle both 300 and 500 can do it it's kind of when you're turning and you need to make the circle a lot smaller in the tight conditions of similar to what these guys are doing here now both vehicles have it and both of these capabilities in both vehicles get praised by Sergey and Andrew because the vehicles, especially something like Tank, tank 500, does such a tight, tight circle of the turn with the help of that, of that capability, yeah? So, the same descent as what Sergey just did on Tank 300, they are doing on Tank 500, um, and, you know, it almost looks a little bit easier to get into that dip and then get straight out of it. Now they are proceeding on to a slightly changed condition from that soil, from the from the clay soil, onto a sand hill. It's a sand, so as you can imagine, pressing your accelerator pedal down a little bit too much would just dig you in. And in this case, uh, Sergey briefly mentions that uh, that Tank 300 has also a camera that shows to you the wheels, shows to you down. It helps massively because the angles obviously change, and it's hard to see when you're going through this rough kind of terrain. But but basically, so the camera very much helps. So they ascend that hill, and then they reach at the kind of these roots of the the roots of the of the trees, and he needs to climb onto them, which he turns uh, to 4L mode uh, away from 4H, the default one, and basically, yeah, again using assisted turn over here to get between the trunks of these trees that are growing. Uh, side by side and there is also this trench or a hole as they're referring to it on the side on the right hand side so he need to make a much tighter left hand turn which is obviously again using this that assisted turn that makes the turn of the vehicle much tighter which is he's really impressed by for you know for tank 300 uh, is it, it's making it possible now tank 500 goes through the same heel uh, also on this auto 4h mode which almost looks a little bit easier at first, but then because the vehicle is so heavy and the hill is sandy, it doesn't look that way. It sort of sinks and he's, the weight of the vehicle in this particular case doesn't work in its favor, unfortunately, but unsurprisingly. So that's where on the sand it looks to us that on the, on the same tires, tank 500 will dig a hole to itself much faster than tank 300. At least we can speculate from this very unscientific um, exercise okay so Sergey he even shouts to Andrew saying hey 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 stop accelerating stop digging a hole for yourself or we will ne never dig you out he's completely right because that tank 500 is massive if if it sits properly on the bottom of of the you know if it if all four wheels sink fully they would like spend hours digging it out I agree with him once Tank 500 reaches the point where, again, there is that hole on the side and uh, they need to turn again. It's obviously a little harder to turn such a massively long vehicle, but at the same time, surprisingly enough, they are both very impressed, it was still possible on Tank 500. So, so far, so good. Comparable performance, other than obviously massive weight, sinks you into the sand much faster on Tank 500, unsurprisingly, okay? Now, there is, they're trying on Tank 300 this really kind of ambitious, I would call it, ascent onto this very steep hill of this kind of, again, clay uh, soil, which doesn't work particularly well, and uh, Sergei has to go around through the forest. To be honest with you, as he gets through it, I was asking myself, why didn't he go straight away that way? Why did he try to turn around and climb that hill, and, like, you just can't get out of that, out of that hole? So, anyway... Um, so yeah, so see, so he was he was struggling there, but then he goes sideways, and when he realizes that he can't get out of there, he has to um, has to take a different way. At this point in time, when he 
has to accelerate he has to go a bit faster in order to gain momentum and get the vehicle out of the dip he hits a tree and he kind of is not lamenting it too much but then later sort of refers to it uh, during the original narrative where he says look this is the biggest difference between between tank 300 and tank 500 other than the obvious size and weight because that would be boring if that was the only conclusion wouldn't it but the biggest conclusion here for Sergei, as he demonstrates to us, is that Tank 300 is built for this stuff. What does it mean? It means that it has the capability, as far as all these deflocks, as far as everything else is concerned, but at the same time, if it hits a tree, if it scrapes the side of the, the side of the, you know, with the fender or something like that, it's made of those specifically designed to be replaced, plastic fenders and elements, that if you crack them, well, you know, bad luck, but at the same time, it's not that dramatic. But if that hit of the same tree was made on tank 500, it would have been a massive panel beating work waiting to happen. It would have been a lot more unpleasant, which I'm sure you would agree. And same thing would have happened with anything solid, without those softened plastic fenders, if you know what I mean. Toyota Prado, Toyota... Land Cruiser 300 with its massive weight hitting a tree like this. You can imagine what I'm talking about here. It's not just a little bit of a, you know, paint touch up. I don't think that that would be particularly the case. So anyway, so the, as far as the verdict is concerned, like I said uh, from the beginning, I think both vehicles are fantastic for what they are. Tank 500 is very expensive, at least in Russia, even compared to Tank 300. So you need to be one of those cool dudes who would like to drive in almost a, almost a uh, Toyota Land Cruiser, but perhaps even have a bit more luxurious experience inside of the vehicle, as uh, the other, as Klubny Service reviewed the interior and they spoke about this enough. I'm not going to repeat myself here. This is an off-roading performance kind of quick overview and a report. But as Sergei said, Tank 300 is built for this. It has the bones and it has the exterior that is built to absorb all these imperfections of you having to throw yourself into the mud and the tree trunks and the everything else, branches hitting you and whatnot. While Tank 500 has the similar bones, has the similar capability, is also a very capable vehicle by the looks of it, as we were demonstrated today, but it's not built for it. It's built to drive you and your massive family or your customers or your clients that you're trying to impress in a vehicle of a representative class around town on a lifted platform like there is that is your biggest difference tank 500 is more than capable to do the similar things to what tank 300 does except in a slightly more of an afterthought way as opposed to designed for this purpose way. And that's probably the main thing that I got out of this video. Did you get something else out of it? Did you want me to elaborate on something particular that was fit into this adapted translation and the editing that you've seen in the background? Ask questions, I'll be more than happy to elaborate. And there are obviously more uh, materials available from ProDrive and other Russian channels that I'm very much following and translating occasionally when I think it would be of interest to you. So please do reach out to me in the comments down below always and ask if you think that I can uh, elaborate on something or provide some further insights into this and I'll tell you if it's possible or not. I don't make no promises, but as you know, as my follower uh, on YouTube here, subscriber, I always try. I definitely always try. So please visit the sponsors of the video to show your support to the channel and maybe get yourself some lovely discounted wireless CarPlay and Android Auto Electronics. We're all in this together. We're all trying to make our lives as car owners a little bit easier, don't we? And always like the video, please, before you leave. YouTube algorithm is a simple thing. There is so much content out there. But the more people explicitly like videos, the more people the YouTube algorithm will show our videos to. The more of us here, the merrier, the more, I views, uh, the more views I get in this case. It is far from making me rich, my friends, in case you're worried that Dimitri will get too rich on our views. Come on, man. But... It tells me that I'm doing something right, and it's just pleasant. So thank you very much for your support. Subscribe for more if you haven't already. What are you waiting for? And I'll talk to you next time.